Hey, I'm really glad you're watching this and I'm not sure if you're staying home because uh, of the COVID-19 and uh, just to be wise, you've felt like it'd be best to stay home and you're watching this. Thanks so much for joining in anyway and uh, so glad. And I'm, I'm uh, grateful for those of you that are, are just trying to be thoughtful and wise as you do this. So I just want to bring you greetings and uh, hope you're having a good holiday weekend, although it's a little unusual this year. And if you're out, uh, maybe on the road, or if you're out of town and you still took the time to watch this, thank you so much for doing that and, and uh, joining us. And if you're from someplace else, welcome. Glad to have you as part of this. I want to talk to you about freedom today. And uh, I do hope you're having a great 4th of July weekend, that it's been a time for you to maybe think and reflect a little bit. Um, our experience has been great. We, uh, we were fortunate to have uh, Trevor and Taylor with us for a few days. Everything was great except for the fireworks. Uh, went to this big warehouse that's not far from my house, a uh, big warehouse store, bought a big bulk pack of fireworks. And I thought this is going to be so fun and there's so many of them. And uh, <laughs> every fountain, every cone, everything with a fuse did not work. <laughs> not, not, not one, not one. And uh, Taylor, our daughter-in-law, said it best. She, best. she goes, oh, fireworks 2020. <laughs> woo <-hoo! laughs> And then we started talking and laughing about how 2020 has just been an odd year and a weird year. And some things that normally work are not working. Some things that usually happen have not happened. And so uh, fireworks 2020, that was, uh, <laughs> that was not a highlight of their visit here in Wichita. But we are so glad they were with us and we're so grateful for that time. I thank God that uh, we live uh, in America. I, I uh, thank God that I get to live in America. I feel blessed beyond measure that that uh, I live here and I never, ever want to take it for granted. I never, ever want to do that. I think we should thank God every day. And yes, I realize we have issues that we need to address and we need to correct some things. We can be better. But I do thank God for this privilege. And one of my favorite lines in the national anthem is near the end. And it's not just because the game is about to start. I mean, all sports fans know when the national anthem is about over and everybody gets excited. Uh, I'll never forget being in Chicago, uh, how they, how they uh, got pretty excited and quite noisy, uh, quite loud during the national anthem. But one of my favorite lines is just near the end, it says, or the land of the free and the home of the brave. The land of the free. See, I am of the opinion and I am of the conviction that the greatest freedom of all comes from God. Today, I want to talk to you about freedom that may be a little bit different than what you might expect on this Sunday. I want you to hear from the words of the Apostle Paul to the people in the province of Galatia. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, and then verses 13 through 15. This is what Paul writes. He said, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's called the royal law. Now, this message and especially this first part of the message has been greatly influenced by by a message Andy Stanley preached something like four or five years ago, and it really has influenced my thinking, and it has really uh, made an impact. And the other uh, influence on this was my high school government class. I had a wonderful teacher named Bill Jacobs. I'm sorry, Fred Jacobs. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, Fred Jacobs was a great uh, teacher and, and just really helped me appreciate and and love our, our government so much more and, and understand it a lot better. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about some thoughts from Andy Stanley and also from Mr. Jacobs from good old East High School. 
See, the people who wrote the Constitution and the Bill of Rights included the Ninth Amendment. And that's basically a catch-all amendment that goes beyond what was all listed. And I think the framers knew uh, that, that things would change over time. Um, you know, we, we have this thing called the Bill of Rights, which we should be incredibly thankful for. Um, if, if they were written today, they'd be a little bit different because some of the things that were happening, you know, over 200, almost 250 years ago were a little bit different than now. But they had the wisdom to have this Ninth Amendment and, uh, it, and it basically was the catch-all. And, and it, one person paraphrased it this way. It's, uh, I have the freedom to do what I want, when I want, where I want, with whom I want, as long as I don't infringe on somebody else's rights. And I think we have become people who feel very strongly about rights. Uh, I have a right. That's, that's kind of what you hear uh, people say, but the founders had some really great insight knowing that if you give people rights without responsibility, things go horribly wrong. Rights or freedom have an implied responsibility. Here's an example. When I was in high school, I came in late one, I came in very late one night, a lot later than I was supposed to. My dad was really a good disciplinarian. He was very fair but I did not think he was fair that night, especially as a high school kid, trying to kind of get his independence. And my dad punished me for coming in late by taking my car keys. Now, that bothered me because I paid for my car. I was the one who put the gas in it. I think he paid the insurance, but I, I paid for that car. And I, I had violated my right to drive my car. And so he removed that right and he took my keys for just a few days. I think he and my mom got tired of carting me around to my job and to school and things like that. But I came in very, very late, so my dad removed that right. When Trevor was in junior high school, one of his friends got into trouble. And his parents did something I'd never heard of before. They removed the door to his room, which is kind of an odd punishment because you'd think you'd rather just kind of like nail it shut and leave him in there. But but they took his door and and... He lost the, the, the right of privacy because he had done wrong. Um, interesting, interesting punishment. You see, with rights comes responsibility. And in a nation, liberty without responsibility undermines or cannibalizes liberty. Freedom can gobble up freedom. If, if freedom gobbles up liberty, you have anarchy. Our founders, the, the framers of the Constitution, the authors of the Bill of Rights, assumed certain things when the Constitution was written. They assumed moral guardrails, that they would provide the impetus for personal responsibility, that it, it made sense that there was this synergy around a moral code and a common value system. And they had three assumptions, three assumptions. Here's the first, a consensus of conscience, the second assumption was a divine accountability. And the third assumption was individual expression was governed by concern for other individuals. So you had your freedom, but, but it was couched in the understanding that you were free in this context of responsibility. There was this idea of what it meant to take care of your neighbor, because if you didn't take care of your neighbor, who would? Remember, they came out of the Revolutionary War and they're kind of a, having to, you know, always look after themselves and, and they were looking after neighbors. And if you didn't take care of your neighbor, then someone else might not. And who would take care of you? I want you to think for a moment about the preamble to the Declaration of Independence. And it it's so beautiful and it's so well written. But listen to how they tied the divine to the personal. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I, I hope, we'll, hope we'll get that. They are, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They believe that this came from God, that these rights came from God. 
that we don't have rights or we didn't have these rights because of the government, but because of God. There was a connection between God's, God and rights and freedom. And it was God and not government that bestowed these rights. So we are all accountable to God for how we exercise our rights. Something Andy Stanley said this, when rights collide, the courts decide that what happened is that as people moved away from some of those assumptions and, and, and that whole connection with the divine and that God is the one who gave us these things, what happened is they had to make law after law after law after law. And pretty soon when, when rights would collide, the courts would decide. And when you move away from what was understood, it means our government will have to create law after law after law after law. And see, the law represents the minimum requirement. In other words, how low can you go? Or how low can I go? What's the least I can do without breaking the law? The result, individual rights are regulated by law. And I will say this, that laws are powerless to inspire they're really just to keep us in line. And a, re a recipe for us to be selfish as we can legally be is that rights become an exercise of power. But I believe there is hope. I think the hope is you as a Christian. The hope is me as a Christian. The hope is our nation with a bunch of Christians living holy, loving lives. If Christians would live out the laws of love, we can make a difference. I know there are a lot of professing Christians in this country, and some probably, they say it, but they don't live it. But I believe if Christians, if people who are truly Christ followers, fully devoted followers of Christ, if they would live out their faith, that we could bring change. And something Andy Stanley said, I, I totally believe, our conduct and behavior as Christians has more potential to bring about change than any candidate we elect or any law we pass. Our conduct and behavior as Christians has the potential to bring great change. The behavior of Christians in this nation has, has more potential to take us to a better place where we're not relegated by law with no sense of divine accountability. I say to us as a church and to us as a congregation and to us as a people, let's bring hope to this place. Let's bring hope. Let's be light. Let's show what this is all about. Well, let's go to our passage of scripture, Galatians chapter five. Paul writes what is called the Magna Carta of Christian freedom. Now, Paul was talking to these people in Galatia about freedom, and there were some issues with, with some, some things about in the church, some things about the, the, the Old Testament, some things about the law. Paul starts talking about freedom. And instead of the mindset of the law, which, which is about what is required of me. And in our context today, in our world, it's, it's how, how low can I go? What's the least I can do and not be in trouble? He talks about being free. What is the freedom from and for? And how is it expressed? It's freedom. The first thing I see is there is a freedom from sin. There's a freedom from sin that we understand that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And he died so we could be free. That's, that's what Jesus did. Free from sin and the penalty, the uh, consequences of sin. Paul writes in another letter, he said, for the wages of sin is death, but the the gift of God, the free gift of God is, is from Jesus and it's what he did for us. It is his grace that he gives us. The end result of Christ's work of grace for humanity is freedom, freedom from exclusion to Christ's gift to us. When we come to receive God's grace through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we're free from sin and free for God, free from sin. Sometimes Paul talked about 
sin like the yoke of slavery, that that's what mastered us. And we were enslaved by it. Well, Jesus died so we could be free from sin. The other thing is, I, I think Paul is talking about a freedom for life, a freedom for life. And Jesus said it best, and please understand a little bit of the context of what happens in this John chapter 8. The, ver the Pharisees were kind of having a confrontation with Jesus. They were having a little bit of an argument, and they were very proud of their birthright, their national heritage. And Jesus said something, and they didn't know quite what to do with it. John chapter 8, verse 36 says, If the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. You'll be free indeed. If the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. And by the way, this is not an anything goes kind of freedom. Freedom in Paul's view is not necessarily freedom from, but freedom for. There's, there's a difference. Christians have been freed from the power of sin in order to be freed for life in Christ. Something very positive. It's not, just, it's not just avoiding going to hell, but it's about a freedom for life in Christ. And Jesus talked about abundant life. Jesus talked about life to the full. Jesus talked about life that was exceedingly abundantly more than what people can ask or imagine. This is not an anything goes kind of freedom. This is a freedom to be freed for life in Christ. Freedom for, not just freedom from. Christians have been freed from the power of sin in order to be freed for life in Christ. That's good news. Here's a third thing. I think when Paul's talking about this, he's talking about a freedom to love. So there's a freedom from sin, a freedom for life, and a freedom to love. Now, this isn't a freedom for self-indulgence. And let me just take a quick rabbit trail for a moment. I think one of my concerns for us as Americans is so many times we want a freedom to just do what we want, even if it's harmful. Self-indulgence, living for the flesh is what Paul talks about. This isn't a freedom for self-indulgence, but rather this amazing freedom to love one another. He gives us a freedom to love one another. It's not an anything goes kind of freedom, but a constrained responsibility, constrained in responsibility and commitment to the welfare of others in the community. A freedom to love. I like how it says that in verse 13 of Galatians 5, Paul writes, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, rather serve one another humbly in love. You see, when Paul is writing about this, especially there at the end of verse 15, he's talking about how, you know, we can really destroy others with our freedom if we're not careful. If there's not responsibility, if there's not proper priority, if there's not a divine accountability, we should not use our freedom to indulge the flesh. For self-indulgence, for selfishness. But instead, you serve one another in love. We have a freedom to love that God gives us. And as you, if you read the rest of Galatians 5, and I would encourage you to do this on this, this holiday weekend, don't underestimate what the Holy Spirit is about to produce in our lives. If you read a little bit farther down in Galatians 5, you'll, you'll see the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience. It talks about self-control. You will fulfill the law by loving when you live in step with the Spirit. I like how the... Uh, I like how the message paraphrases verse 14. I love this. Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. Galatians 5 verse 14. 
I love what uh, is put on our church signs. And that's something I think is so cool about our church. I like that about Woodland Lakes. They're, I'm grateful for some of our folks who put a lot of thought and prayer in what is displayed. And we have two signs. So we have four sides of those signs. And it made me so proud. I was driving in the other day. I was driving into the church campus and one of the signs said this, true freedom is found in Jesus. True freedom is found in Jesus. I believe that is true. True freedom is found in Jesus. It's not found in, in some kind of system or structure. True freedom is found in Jesus. I hope you know Jesus. I hope that you trust in Jesus. I hope you belong to Jesus. I invite you to bow your heads and pray with me. Father, thank you so much for the freedom you give us to uh, be freed from sin and, and freed for life. And you give us a freedom to love. Would you help us to be that kind of people at Wilden Lakes Community Church? Would you help us to love? Would you help us to fulfill the royal law of love, which is to love our neighbor as ourself? That people would see Jesus in us by the way we respond and the way we live and the way we behave, the way we talk, the things we put on social media, the way we relate to other people, the way we deal with conflict. God, help us to love. Help us to realize that we're free to love and that you'll help us and your spirit will guide us. I pray, oh Father, that you would just help Woodland Lakes to be that kind of church, that we would be that, uh, that place where people see light, where people are blessed and encouraged. We love you so much. We thank you. Thank you for our nation. Thank you for this country. Help us, Father, to be a light in this nation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to um, pronounce a benediction. This is what we're going to do uh, as people leave the room on uh, Sunday morning. Uh, so please receive this benediction. It's taken straight from Galatians 5. People of God, God has called you to a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. Let us fulfill the law of love this week. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. I pray that God will bless you and keep you and he'll make his face to shine upon you. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.